uh, purpose of this video is to introduce the uh, asynchronous communication adapter, the ACOM2, to you and show you how uh, it's used with the uh, AR32A uh, programmer to interface to uh, Motorola microcontrollers. And the Motorola microcontrollers are found in a variety of, uh, of automotive modules. Um, the Toyota Delco ECU, uh, the Saab Twice, um, the BMW EWS, um, just to name a few. If you were a, an automotive locksmith or if you're an automotive technician, uh, these are also found in um, uh, Audi and Mercedes ECUs. Um, they're found in some Ford clusters and they are different than the typical 8-pin double EEPROM. Basically a, uh, a microcontroller, which is uh, what these components are, are called, are uh, the interface requires the establishment of a communication link between the microcontroller itself and the programming system. You might think of it as a, uh, a little modem link. And once that's established, then you can access the, uh, the internal EEPROM of the microcontroller uh, memory array just as you would a, a regular 8-pin uh, double EEPROM. But there's an extra step, and the extra step is to establish communication, confirm that communication has been established uh, before you can proceed. So what we're going to do first is we're going to show you the ACOM2 adapter and then we're going to uh, show you the documentation that comes with it and uh, so you have an understanding of uh, what it is and uh, also the ACOM2 adapter is what's different between automotive locksmith kit 1 and automotive locksmith kit 2 or automotive kit 1 and automotive kit 2. The automotive locksmith kits are based on the automotive kits they uh, include additional uh, locksmith components of which only a locksmith would uh, would have interest. So um, let me show you the adapter and uh, the documentation that comes with it. Okay, this is the ACOM2 adapter in its plastic box, plastic case. Um, and as I said, uh, there was an ACOM1 which didn't do as many uh, different families of the Motorola microcontroller as the ACOM2. Uh, the ACOM2 uh, addresses uh, the 05 family, the 0809 family, uh, the 908, I'm sorry, 908 family, 08908, and the, uh, uh, the 11 family. So let's take it out of its box. And you'll notice it's different than the in-circuit adapter. It has two uh, connecting wires here and the purpose of the wires is they will uh, apply power to the uh, the adapter and also provide an external voltage which is required to establish communication um, with uh, certain families of the microcontroller okay and uh, the other thing that's in the box is this is the uh, the connection uh, terminator which um, will allow you to attach the uh, the probes, which is how the ACOM2 attaches to uh, the the microcontroller, this attaches to the ACOM2. It's a little transition board which um, uh, allows you to hook the probes, either the precision probe set or the standard probe set, or if you want to wire your own, you can get one of our cables and wire your own. But um, this is what we provide to make the transition between the ACOM and the probes, and then there is this. These are called probe extensions and the reason that we provide probe extensions is that occasionally you will need to uh, establish connection, a connection to pins on the microcontroller so that uh, the microcontroller will be in a mode where we can't communicate with it. 
Okay, basically, uh, the probes, there are eight probes, eight colored probes, and occasionally you need to take another pin on the, uh, the microcontroller and force it to a, a, a logic state that will uh, permit communication. And we show you how to do that with uh, documentation, but that's what these are for. So you get the ACOM2 adapter, you get the, uh, the little transition board to connect to the probes, and then you get these two additional probe extensions. Um, and in the photos that we have on our website, we show you how, uh, in the, the event that one of these is needed, we show you how to, how to connect it and use it. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the documentation that comes with the ACOM2. Okay, there are two pieces of documentation that come with your ACOM2. And this one is the, uh, the primary document as, um, with all of our options, adapters, and uh, uh, interfaces. We don't skimp on documentation. We tell you how things work, how to set them up, and how to use them. Uh, this one is using the ACOM2 adapter with Motorola microcontrollers and automotive applications. Okay, so I'm not going to go through every page of this document, but it covers the different families apart, how to hook it up, um, and at the back I will show you this um, in the event that, that we don't have a photo sequence of the part to which you would like to connect we provide you with connection diagrams for the different uh, families and sizes of the, um, the microcontrollers so you know and each one of these has a, a uh, an illustration of where to attach the probes so uh, this is the document that comes with the ACOM2 and it's for your for your reference, and we strongly suggest that uh, you read it. The other document that we uh, provide is this one. This is uh, a uh, list of the Motorola mask set, mask numbers to the actual physical part. Okay, so with, with our software, you have to identify the, uh, the part by its industry standard part number, not by its mask number. So uh, we also provide in the, uh, the library and we provide a, a mask to part uh, translation table. So in the event that you don't have this paper document, you can do it through the library. And I'm not gonna bring that up right now, but I will just tell you that it's there. Okay, so those are the, do the two pieces of documentation that come with your ACOM2. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install the ACOM2 in the programmer and install the uh, the transition board and uh, attach a probe set. So we'll do that in just a moment. Okay, here's the programmer, and at this time it's got the um, the in circuit adapter, the ASCRS M1A, installed. So we'll remove that, lift up the handle, take it out, and I will tell you when you use the ACOM2. Although when you select the part, our software will show you this. Uh, the dip switch settings are three and five up and the rest are down okay now I want to point out a feature of the programming unit and that is right here we have what's called the accessory connector right here the accessory connector allows the EEPROM plus system to do uh, things that other products don't do simply because we provide uh, external voltages and signals that um, uh, don't necessarily come from the, uh, the the socket on the programming unit. Okay, these can be attached to external adapters, and uh, which allows us to support um, additional families of components without altering the internal electronics of the programmer, and therefore your programmer uh, doesn't become obsolete. So let me zoom in and you can see what the accessory connector is. Okay, here's the accessory connector. And you can see that it has uh, five individual pins and the pins are uh, five volts ground, plus 35, 12 volts AC, and VPP. All right, so those are the uh, signals that come from the accessory connector. And if you look at the ACOM2 adapter, is here you will notice that here it tells you connect to accessory connector plus five and here 
it says connect to accessory connector VPP. Okay, so the orange wire is connected to plus five, and the yellow wire is connected to VPP. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Even though uh, the programmer is powered up, it does not hurt it to do this. So you can just place the orange wire over the uh, plus five pin and the uh, yellow wire over the VPP pin. And now we're going to go ahead and install the adapter into the programming unit itself. Okay, so here is the uh, adapter. And to install it in a programming unit, we just lift the handle, make sure it's fully left justified, and slip it into the, the zip socket on the programming unit, make sure it's fully seated. And now we're, uh, we're ready to um, use the, uh, the ACOM2. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is uh, install the transition board is right here and the transition board aligns with the strip connector on the uh, ACOM2 which is here and the uh, pins on the strip connector are labeled uh, uh, plus five going up to the top plus five uh, VG ground up through uh, transmit and receive and the same signals are uh, marked on your accessory or the, the transition board, receive, and plus five. It only goes in one way. So, um, and plus it's marked to ACOM. So it, it's not gonna go in like this because that would cover up the switch and make it impossible to use. So it goes like this. You just line up the pins with the strip connector and you push it down. Okay, now these pins will accept either our uh, standard probe set um, or the precision probe set whichever uh, is most, uh, whichever one is necessary for connecting to the processor uh, with which you will be working, okay? Also the ACOM2 has a dip switch on it, a configuration switch right here. And depending upon the part that you select, whether you're working with a, uh, a twice module or whatever, um, the software will show you how to set the switches on the, uh, the ACOM2. So it'll be set correctly for whatever your, your device. I'm going to show you something else. Um, this adapter applies power, supplies power to the, the external assembly, whatever you're working on, whatever module you're working on. And the way that uh, it supplies power is we literally have an on-off switch right here. Okay, so when you are uh, ready once the cable your your probe set is connected to the part and to the ACOM2 you you turn on the switch and you'll see that the red LED the LED lights indicating that it's now uh, powering the external uh, assembly basically this prevents you from um, hooking up to the module hot okay because if you're attaching probes to the module you don't want those probes to be uh, uh, have active voltages on them um, while you're hooking them up. So you start, you hook up the probes first and then you turn on the ACOM2. So I wanted you to see that. Okay, so we're gonna turn off the ACOM2. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to attach the probes. Okay, here are our standard probes. Right here, the standard probe set, and you would use this with a uh, uh, a module which has a, a PLCC type of microcontroller, such as uh, the uh, BMW EWS or the older Toyota Delco ECU. And again, you have the black plug, and the black plug attaches to the transition board on the ACOM2, and again, the brown wire goes on the right. Okay, so we just push the plug over the top of the uh, connector and we're now ready to uh, attach to our processor and our module. And this is as far as I'm going to, uh, to take this particular video, okay, because this video will apply to um, all of the, uh, 
the asynchronous um, communication microcontrollers and we don't need to include this video at the beginning of every one of those videos so that's going to wrap up this video um, you'll be able to access it if you have any questions about how to set this up or um, uh, any other issue so uh, at this point uh, we're just going to end it and you'll see this uh, reappear with other videos in the future.